Unreal Engine provides a pretty great way of being able to teleport around the environment from one position to another. Quite simply, they just add in a function that can be applied to any actor called teleport. All you do is apply a location and rotation and the actor automatically teleports to that location or at least as close to that location as it possibly can. But what if we wanted to take this a step further for VR? Say for example we wanted to fade the whole screen to white or black so that way the player can't actually see that sudden snap of the teleport and everything fades and they're just suddenly there. Well in this video I'm going to show you exactly how you can do just that. But before we jump into this video, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like this one, be sure to like the subscribe button down below and with that let's jump right into the video. All right, so let me go and show you uh, how this all works. So I actually moved myself a little bit closer to the edge of my, um, my VR world here, so that way you could actually see this because I don't have a lot of landmarks or anything that very clearly show this teleportation working. So I moved myself a little closer so that way it's a lot more of a dramatic change and you can see this a little bit better. So let me go and show you real quick how this looks. So if I go ahead and teleport, say, all the way to the edge there, You'll see everything fades to white and then the teleport happens. There's no notice. So you, you don't really notice that sudden, you know, shift or anything like that. It just happens, um, which is really nice. It, it, it's a really nice way of doing this. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is a very simple teleportation. This will this will fade everything to white. And the way that this works is this is a component. You can attach this to any VR player that you would like. Um, whether it be a pawn, character, uh, maybe you have something else altogether. Maybe, maybe you have it on like an actor for some reason. I don't, I don't know why you would, but maybe you have it on it. Maybe you've turned an actor into a player. You can, you can have this on top of anything that already uses that teleportation function. Um, it just needs to be some sort of actor, if I recall. I think any actor uses the teleportation function. So yeah, and then everything fades to white, everything goes back. You can also change the color. I, I set it to white just to prove that it can be a different color. Um, but this can be really any color. You can make it red, blue, black, green, whatever. Um, whatever color you would like, any color works. And you don't, like I said, you don't really notice anything. I can even have like my hand up to my head and you won't see my controller or anything. Like you may see if this was like a UI or with maybe a lot of other materials because depth testing is disabled on this material. So this material shows over everything else. So nothing should be able to overlap with this material. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the video and I can show you exactly how this all works. To start off, let's first create a material that we're going to need in order for this to work. To do this, I'm simply going to create a material and I'm going to store this in a folder called materials. We're only going to be dealing with this one material, however, so if you really don't want to store this in a folder, this isn't necessary. Before we start modifying anything in the material graph, we first need to make a couple quick adjustments in the details panel for our material. First, we need to change the blend mode to translucent. This is necessary because we need access to the opacity node that you actually see in our material node right there in the center of our material graph. Second thing we need to do also in the details panel is we also need to make sure that this material is two-sided. This is because we're going to be putting a sphere around our player's head and we want to make sure that we're able to see this material from the inside, not specifically from the outside. That's just more of an addition for this checkbox. You're also going to want to make sure to disable depth testing in the material. The reason for this is that disabling depth testing will allow for us to keep this material in front of all other actors. This means that even if our head player is sticking their head in a wall or if maybe they have their hand too close to their head, whatever objects are a lot closer to the camera than this material will not show up in front of this material. This material will always layer over anything else. Once you've done this, go ahead and jump over into the material graph and we're going to need to do two things. First off, we of course need some kind of base color. This can really be any color that you would like and in order to add this in, we just need to add in a vector parameter. For this color, I'm going to set this vector parameter color to white, but this again can be whatever color you would like. This is just going to determine what color our screen fades to when we're doing our teleportation. 
The second thing we're going to need is we're going to need to add a scalar parameter. This scalar parameter can again be any value you want. I'm gonna set this to 0.5 since that's what we're going to need in order to actually be able to see our material. And then we're going to go and feed this into the opacity node in our material. While you're making this scalar, also note the exact name that you're using for this parameter. You're going to need to remember this exact name for when we set up our teleportation component here in one second. Once all that's done, now we are ready to finally get started on our teleportation component. To do this, go ahead and close down that material you were just working on, and then we're going to want to create a new static mesh component. The reason we're using a static mesh component is because we want something that we're able to put around our player's head. In this case, we'll be using a sphere like I had mentioned earlier. And then we're going to use this sphere in order to actually be able to fade in and out of our scene. Once you have this static mesh component open that we had just made, go ahead and open up the class defaults and we're first going to make just a couple of quick changes here. This is just going to save us time whenever we decide to add in this teleportation component to our player later on. First, I'm going to go ahead and give our teleportation component a static mesh. In this case, I'm going to use a sphere. You don't have to use a sphere, really any shape should work, but I'm using a sphere just because to me it just seems a little bit more fitting for our player. Second thing you're going to want to do is you'll also want to go into the material for whatever shape you use, whatever static mesh you use, and you want to make sure that you apply that opacity material that we had made earlier on. With our class defaults out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the event graph. Let's go and start off with our begin play. We're only going to need to do one thing here. For our begin play, we want to set scalar parameter value on material. For this scalar parameter value, the parameter name is going to be the exact same scalar name that you had made in the material. That's why I said you wanted to make sure that you remember the exact name of your scalar parameter. So go and grab that name and put it into your parameter name here. Then the parameter value we're going to set to zero. Next, go ahead and move your tick down a little ways because we're going to end up coming back to this later. I want to first start off by making a couple of custom events that we're going to need in order to actually call our teleportation and get all this to work properly. First, go and create a custom event. And this example, I'm going to call this custom event teleport. Once you have this custom event created, you're going to need two inputs, a location and a rotation. These are both going to be necessary for our teleportation later on. So we want to make sure that we have access to these now. Once you have this custom event created, the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to store this location and rotation in a transform variable for later. Reason for this is we're going to be jumping through a couple of custom events in order to get all this to work. So we're not going to really have access to these input nodes later on. We need to store these so that way we can access them later. Once you have the, that location and rotation stored, next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set timer by event. Now, in case you're unaware of what this does, this is going to allow for us to call an event over a period of time. What this will allow for us to do is it'll allow for us to both delay our teleportation, but it'll also allow for us to teleport our fade back into the scene. We will however need to store this timer handle and I'll talk about that a little bit more in one second here. In order to set this up, Go ahead and drag off the event tab in the set timer by event. And here you're going to want to create another custom event. This is going to be necessary in order for this set timer by event to work. I'm going to call this new custom event fade to white. We're not actually going to use this custom event anywhere. We're never going to call this in our player. So it, the name really doesn't matter. This is more just for our own sake. The other thing we're going to want to do is we're also going to want to set a time value. In this case, I'm going to set to one second. Then finally, we need to do two more things. First, we're going to create a new Boolean. This is going to be called invert. I'm going to set this to false. This is going to be used in the tick later on. I'll explain this a little bit more once we get to that point. And the second thing we want to do is we want to take the return value from our set timer by event and we want to convert this to a variable so that way we can use this in the tick as well. With that, the beginning stages of our teleport custom event are really underway. So let's go ahead and get started on this, this next custom event that we created, the fade to white that we created on our set timer by event. Here we're going to do a couple things. 
First, we're going to set timer handle back to null. You can do this simply by dragging in set timer handle and just leaving it there. Next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to actually teleport. To do this, we're going to get the owner of our current component. In this case, this should usually be our own VR pawn, unless you're using a different type of VR character or something like that. Then using our get owner, we're going to want to call the teleport function. Then we're going to want to also go and feed in that location rotation that we got when we started our teleport custom event. This will allow for our teleportation to actually occur. And one of the nice things is at this point, we now know that one second has passed. This means that our opacity is now set to a full one and our player's view should now be entirely gone. After we've done the teleport, we now want to start fading back into the scene. To do this, we're going to call another set timer by event. This is again going to have a time of one and we're going to create another new event. This time we're going to call, we're going to call this event fade back. Once you've called this set timer by event, we again want to set our invert, but this time we're going to set it to true. And then we also want to again store our timer handle for our tick event. Finally, to finish off this whole teleportation function, last thing we want to do is go down to this last custom event that we made, fade back, and here we again want to set timer handle back to null, and we also want to make sure that invert is set back to false. Now we are finally ready to move on to the event tick. This is going to be the last stage for this whole teleportation component. Now our event tick is going to be pretty simple. First thing we want to do is we want to run our invert boolean through a branch. What this invert boolean will allow for us to do is it'll allow for us to determine if we are fading into the scene or if we're fading to whatever color our material is set to. On false for this branch, we're going to set a scalar parameter value on materials. This is going to be the same thing that we called in our event begin play in case you don't remember that. The parameter name is going to be the same. In this case, my name is opacity again. And then the parameter value, we're going to get our timer handle. Then we're going to get timer elapsed time by handle, and that's going to go directly into our parameter value. Then on true, we again want to set scalar parameter value on materials with the same parameter name again, and again, in this case, mine's opacity. And then our parameter value is going to be one minus that same get timer elapsed time by handle float. With that, our teleportation component is now complete. Last step is simply to apply it to our character. In this case, we're going to go and open up the VR pawn and add it there. In the VR pawn, you want to go ahead and click on your camera and add the teleportation component that we just put together. Now, if your opacity is not zero like mine isn't, you should see a sphere with a slightly tra transparent uh, view to it right there in the viewport. Finally, to use this teleportation component, we simply need to call that teleport event that we just made. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and open up the try teleport function that we should have in our VR pawn. If you're using a different character or you designed a different way of teleporting around, you may not find it here. Then go ahead and scroll all the way to the end of try teleport. And we simply want to get our teleportation component and call teleport on it. Then we can pass through the location rotation just as we usually would and everything will work just fine.
With that, we now have a very simple teleportation component that allows for us to very smoothly be able to teleport from one location to another, as opposed to just a simple blip and you're there. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. I also want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.